Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, so we're diving a little bit deeper into the early 1980s today, and we're looking at a computer which isn't really widely known. It's a micro 8-bit computer, and it was going up against other computers at the time, such as the Sinclair computers. So there was a different range of models produced by Tangerine. That's a bit of a complex history. Let's just say the Auric didn't quite catch on, and the ZX Spectrum in Britain, that is, got their way with the computing industry at the time, and the Auric range computers kind of uh, got overshadowed by other computers so I've looked into this and I have found a very good emulator which supports this range of 8-bit micros the link is in my description for this one as always uh, and we are downloading the Oricatron so for this tutorial I'm using Windows 11 as always and I'm going to download the win32.zip so let's just drag this out onto the desktop. Okay, so once you've got this on your desktop, let's just make a new folder just to keep all this nice and neat as always. So uh, right click, new and then folder, and let's just call this folder Auric. So I'm gonna drag this zip folder I've just downloaded into my newly created Auric. And inside here, I'm gonna just extract the contents. I use WinRAR, uh, you might use another extraction tool such as 7-Zip or WinZip. If you're using WinRAR, then obviously just extract. Uh, so a good thing about this emulator package is it's actually got several games inside it, but you can find games for this on the net, and most of these are freeware nowadays. There's also a little bit of a community which are uh, writing games for the Auric range of computers. So they're worth checking out nevertheless. Uh, a lot of the titles I've seen tend to be isometric, uh, kind of Batman type games, uh, the original Batman game, say on the ZX Spectrum. So let's just open up this emulator. So if we left click on the Oregon Tron application. And here you go. So let's just listen to this type. Wow, so it even emulates that really nice little I really like that, that's cool. reason for this tutorial then is to show you how to load up games and play around with other settings. So if we just press F1 on the keyboard. So we press F1 and this brings up a really nice concise menu and I think this is really nice compared with some emulators I've done tutorials for. So first things first, most of your games are going to be on like a tap or a cassette format type of file. Uh, from my knowledge, not many discs were produced for the Auric range of computers, to my knowledge, but that might be debated if you're watching this and you're an Auric fan. So I'm going to go to Insert Tape and we're going to load up something. So like I say, the package comes with some games already inside when you download the emulator and it's already directed us to the tapes folder. And this has got a copy of cyclotron.tap. So if we just def double left click on this one. And the next thing you're gonna to need to do, now this game has been loaded, you're just gonna type in the original commands to make this game load. So all you're gonna do is type in C, L, O, A, D. Whoops. You need two quotation marks. So to do this on a modern day keyboard, you're just going to be using shift together with the at symbol. And there you go. So from here, we can press enter. And there we go. So kind of comparable with something like an Amstrad uh, game, I'd say very bright colours, uh, certainly a lot brighter than you would see on the Commodore 64. So this is a game which comes with, this is Tron obviously. 
So let's check the other features this emulator has to offer. So if we press F1 again, if we go down to video options, we can make this into full screen. And there we go. Uh, other bits and pieces you can do with this is if we just go down to keyboard options, you can map your own keys to this, which is gonna be easier for particular people out there to use. Uh, like I noticed just now, to get the quotation marks for this emulator, you're gonna need to use on a day keyboard, shift plus the at sign. If you press shift and the conventional digit two with the quote marks, it's not going to work and you're gonna get another uh, digit or whatever come up. So uh, that's worth looking into. And whilst we're here, it's going to show us the keyboard of the Oryx. So if you intend to map out your own mappings, uh, you know, go ahead. So let's just go back into F1 again. This time I'm going to show you how we can change models. So say you've got a game for a later model of the Oryx computers. All we do here is if we go to hardware options, and just here we'll have the range of different Auric models. So we've got the Auric 1, we've got the Auric 1 16 kilobyte, uh, we got the Atmos model, the Telestrat, and finally the Brevets 8D, uh, which I believe was a Russian machine. So I'm gonna just keep this as Atmos. So if you have got a game for the Telestrat, it was made specifically, then all you're gonna do is change this to Telestrat. So let's Take a quick look at loading disc games. So you've got some disc games, like I said, this emulator does come with some. Press F1. And to do this, we're gonna to go to insert disc zero. And here is your free games you get in with this package. I'm gonna just randomly pick a game here, Buggy Boy. And the disc games, they do load automatically. So this is some kind of demo, I'd imagine. And you can also add scan lines on this, so if you're into the really retro, old school look, if you go under video options, just enter scan lines, and as you can see in the background, we now have scan lines. Personally, I don't like scan lines, so that's entirely up to you. And let's just exit out of here to continue with this demo. And there we go, so this is no C64 demo, this is just a C4K orange. So you know, for such a forgotten computer, I think um, some of the work just there gone into this demo, it's very comparable with something like ZX Spectrum, certainly using the same type of color palette. Uh, other things you can do with this is overclock. So you can make this emulator run at a faster pace rather than say one megahertz CPU. Uh, for which reason you might want to do this, it's entirely up to you, but the option is there to make things run faster. And of course, just like most other emulators, we've also got save states and load states on this. So let me just show you how to do this. So to save a game you're playing, uh, let me just save this demo in the background. So right now, this demo is here. So if I just save, and this is gonna bring up this folder just here, and we're just gonna name this save file as demo or devmo. And I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna go back into the program. Okay, so let's check out loading that part I just saved a minute ago. So, load. And as you can see, it loaded up very briefly where I saved it from a minute ago. 
So yeah, it's a great looking system. I've owned one of these a little while back, but I didn't have a tape drive which was compatible with it. So I'm pretty sure I sold it on and just carried on with my Spectrum or Commodore at the time. So uh, yeah, links in the description as always. And if you want to support my channel, please do go to my Patreon or visit my Amazon list, which I'm looking for things to improve my channel and the content which I'm giving you. Check out my other emulation tutorials. By all means, I've got a ridiculous amount of tutorials in there at this point, covering everything from the Sinclair Spectrum right up until the GameCube and everything in between, such as oddities, such as the Auric range of computers. So until next time, you take care.